Welcome back to Daily Reddit Stories. Let's start with the story. Aite for supporting a bride who abandoned her groom at the altar. My husband and I attended a wedding recently. It was a bit of a unique situation because the wedding was for his kind of cousin slash niece. I'm not entirely sure how to label the exact relationship, but they were close when they were growing up. Their families had always been in a fine, and though the exact connection was a bit fuzzy, they shared a lot of history and fond memories. The wedding was quite unconventional, and I have to admit, I'd never seen one organized like this before. Instead of a traditional ceremony and reception, they decided to kick things off with a brunch. This brunch was meant to be a casual, relaxed gathering with the bride and groom, giving guests a chance to mingle and enjoy some light fare before the main event. After the brunch, the wedding party took an hour to get ready while the guests stayed behind, enjoying their meal and socializing. Everything seemed normal enough at the start. The couple appeared happy, excited, and maybe a bit nervous, but who wouldn't be on their wedding day? The groom looked dashing in his suit, and the bride was radiant in her wedding dress, which was truly stunning. The atmosphere was light and joyful, and I was looking forward to the ceremony and the reception that would follow. However, as the hour passed and the wedding party did not return, the mood shifted. The guests, still seated at brunch, began to grow restless. The music was playing softly in the background, and we all waited expectantly for the ceremony to start. After a few minutes of awkward silence, the bride's father stepped in to address the guests. He looked distressed and announced that the bride had left. It was a shocking revelation that left everyone in stunned silence. The groom, who had been so cheerful just moments before, was now visibly upset. Tears streamed down his face as he sat alone at a table, and the bride's mother was frantically trying to calm everyone down, her voice rising in frustration and despair. It quickly became clear that this was not the way anyone had planned for the day to go. The reception, which was supposed to be a celebration, turned into a disorganized affair. The caterers and staff hurriedly packed up the food, and guests were encouraged to take food to go to avoid waste. The situation was chaotic, and I couldn't help but feel a sense of disappointment and confusion. The wedding that seemed so promising, and filled with potential, had devolved into a fiasco. Since a lot of family members had traveled from out of town for the wedding, the bride's side of the family decided to host a reunion to make up for the ruined celebration. It was at this reunion that the bride revealed the reason for her abrupt departure. She explained that during brunch, the groom's ex, who was an EMT, had approached her with some shocking information. The ex claimed that she had slept with the groom and even showed the bride a sex tape. This revelation was devastating for the bride, who understandably, did not want to marry someone she believed had cheated on her. The emotional turmoil she must have experienced in that moment was palpable. The drama didn't end there. The groom's family took to social media, attacking the bride and spreading slanderous comments about her. They painted her as the villain in this tragic story, which only fueled the fire of conflict. In response, the bride's side of the family fought back, publicly accusing the groom of infidelity. The online exchange turned into a full-blown public spectacle, with both sides airing their grievances and accusations. In an attempt to clear things up, the groom visited the bride's house. It was an emotional and tense meeting. It turned out that the groom hadn't actually cheated. The sex tape was from years ago, and since the groom hadn't changed much in appearance, the bride believed the ex's claims that it was recent. The ex admitted to fabricating the story in an attempt to sabotage the wedding. Despite the groom being exonerated by the ex's confession, the backlash against the bride continued. Rather than focusing on the ex's deceit, everyone turned their anger towards the bride. Her own family criticized her for being gullible and for not giving the groom a chance to explain himself before making such a dramatic decision. The situation was overwhelming, and I felt compelled to speak up in her defense. I argued that I would have believed the video evidence too, given the circumstances and the added pressure of the ex attending the wedding. The whole ordeal felt like an unfair and painful twist of fate for the bride. Now, the entire family seemed to be against both me and the bride. The atmosphere was cold and tense, and the strain on relationships was evident. My husband was upset because he felt that if someone accused him of cheating on me, I'd just take their word for it without question. I found this perspective unfair and hurtful. I talked to my husband about how I felt, and initially he laughed it off. But as he reflected on the situation more deeply, he began to see my point. He was still at the bride's house trying to help with the situation when I left for the hotel to escape the overwhelming environment. In the midst of all this turmoil, the groom's behavior was puzzling. 
even though he had been cleared of cheating, he continued to grovel and apologize profusely. This level of remorse seemed odd to my husband, who knew the groom better than I did. The groom was usually someone who held himself high and would never admit fault for something he didn't believe he was responsible for. My husband suspected that the groom's excessive apologies might be an indication of actual guilt, though he decided not to bring it up due to the already high tensions. I also tried to explain to my husband how his comments about me, believing anyone who accused him of cheating felt unfair. He eventually apologized, saying he was just stressed earlier, and that he felt we had wasted money on this trip and missed seeing our child because of a wedding that ended up being a disaster over a lie. The bride later texted me to thank me for defending her. She appreciated the support, even though the situation had turned out to be so complicated and painful. Most of the slandering social media posts had been taken down, which was a small relief in the midst of all the drama. The ex, on the other hand, continued to play the victim on social media. Her posts were filled with melodramatic and self-pitying content, including those depressing Bart Simpson memes. It was almost comical how she was handling the situation at her age, and it only added to the absurdity of the whole affair. The situation took another turn when the groom's mother visited the bride's house after I had left. She was furious and threatened to burn the place down, because she felt humiliated by the way the bride had exposed her son's supposed infidelity. The wedding had been a big event, with many of the groom's co-workers and acquaintances in attendance, making the public scandal even more damaging for her. Reflecting on the whole day, I felt like there were still missing pieces to the puzzle. The entire experience had been exhausting, and I was emotionally drained. Edit plus question. Some people have suggested that I should show this post to the bride. I'm worried she might not react well to having her personal business shared online, especially since I don't know her very well. On the other hand, she might appreciate seeing that most people are on her side. I also don't want her to see my conspiracy theory about whether the groom actually cheated as there's no concrete proof. Should I go ahead and share it with her? Update. I decided to send this post to the bride and also informed my mother-in-law, who was very close to me, about the situation. I started with the bride. As expected, she was initially upset that I had put her personal matters online. We had a brief, polite conversation where we avoided the main issue, but then I mentioned I had posted about it on Reddit. I sent her the link during our call. She didn't yell, but she said I shouldn't have done that. I reassured her that I didn't use any names or identifiable details, and she ended the call. A few minutes later, she called me back, saying that after reading the comments, she felt a bit better. She apologized for snapping at me, though I didn't really feel like she had. She shared that she felt many of the comments were blowing things out of proportion regarding the mother-in-law and the groom. She clarified that the mother-in-law wasn't as evil as the post suggested and that she understood why the mother-in-law wanted the ex at the wedding. When the mother-in-law threatened to burn down the house, she said it was taken out of context and wasn't meant to be taken seriously. When I asked about her plans with the groom, she seemed unsure and sad, so I decided not to press the issue. She also mentioned that she didn't believe the groom had cheated on her, and that my husband might have a skewed view of him because he's difficult to understand. After our conversation, my husband and I called his mother to update her since she couldn't attend the wedding. She informed us that the ex hadn't actually saved her life, she merely administered an EpiPen for a mild allergic reaction. My mother-in-law felt that the ex's claim of saving a life was a dramatic exaggeration meant to guilt the bride into letting her attend the wedding. My mother-in-law also believed that the bride's mother-in-law wasn't involved in sabotaging the wedding. She felt that, despite any affection for the ex, the bride's mother-in-law would never intentionally ruin her son's wedding.